Hey, at Cryptozins, tonight stories. Ethereum's first mainnet shadow fork goes live. Hacked Indian official Twitter accounts advertise NFTs. Board Ape Yacht Club goes Hollywood. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time. The date is April 11th, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm your host, Nick. The cover model for this podcast is Tex. And together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. Now, before we get into tonight's stories, let's take a quick look at the markets. And we went straight to Goblin Town today, didn't we? At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $1.83 trillion. It's down 6.36% since yesterday. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin down 6.47%, Ethereum down 7.22%, Tether, Binance Coin down 5.6%, and USDC. The global NFT market cap is up over $10.26 billion. That's up 2.1% in 24. According to CoinMarketCap, the top five NFT collections by sales volume are Mutant Apes up 0.16%, Izuki up 0.18%, Bored Apes, they're even on the day, Clonex up 0.11%, and CryptoPunks up 0.9%. Now, keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. Ethereum's first main net shadow fork goes live, but you won't see the effects of it. You see, this shadow fork is intended to test the next phase of the switch from proof of work to proof of stake. It's not expected to have any impact on the existing Ethereum mainnet. And the time's coming quick, right? It really wasn't all that long ago that the Ethereum Foundation developers were talking about the Kiln Merge testnet. They just released the specs last February. And then on March 14th, Tim Baiko announced that the Kintsugi was in the process of being sunsetted. Kiln uh, execution layer was launched under proof of work in parallel to a beacon chain running proof of stake. So you've got proof of stake and proof of work going at the same time. So since March 15th, the testnet has been running entirely under proof of stake. Tim Baiko tweeted, quote, Kiln, the next iteration of Ethereum merged testnets, is now live. Highly recommended that the node operators, application developers, stakers, tooling info providers test their setups on the network. Parathosh Jayanthi is a developer with the Ethereum Foundation. And he tweeted, quote, wondering what the testing the merge team has been up to? The aim of the Kiln Merge Testnet was to allow the community to practice running their nodes, deploying contracts, testing infrastructure, etc. We hope it's helping the community get a sense of the post-merge world. And then today, Marius van der Weijen uh, tweeted out, We're very close to a historical event. We're testing proof of stake on Ethereum. Today will be the first mainnet shadow fork ever. We're roughly 690 blocks about two hours away from TTD. Kiln is expected to be the last merged testnet created before existing public testnets are upgraded. And everybody, from application developers to node operators to stakers and infrastructure providers, they're all encouraged to test on Kiln. What this will all very likely mean is that Ethereum will transition to full-on proof-of-stake and that transitioning would follow upgraded existing public test nets if everything goes well. Now, presently, the amount of staked Ethereum on the beacon chain is approaching 10.9 billion. The average staking balance for the beacon chain is 33.5 Ethereum. And the beacon chain has roughly 340,000 validators. That's a gain of 13 percent from early March when they had just gotten to the 300,000th validator recorded. Hacked Indian official Twitter accounts advertise NFTs. 
I think maybe the government of India should probably spend more time understanding the crypto and NFT space and how to secure their Twitter accounts and less time trying to stamp cryptocurrency out and tax it into oblivion. So a series of cyber attacks breached a number of Twitter accounts. And these are accounts for members in both the administrative and legislative branches of the Indian government. And once the account got breached, it sent out announcements promoting the Azuki NFT project. The most recent victim is an account owned by the Punjab unit of the Indian Congress. And it's kind of funny what happened. Apparently, this account ended up spamming more than 100 tweets in a couple of minutes. They were tagging accounts supposedly related to cryptocurrency and NFT activities. And I tell you, personally, I have been tagged in these kind of posts. It doesn't bother me. I just end up wondering what it was all about. Now, last Saturday, another official account was compromised. And they replaced the account's profile pic with a Bored Ape JPEG. And that one also launched a bot-fueled assault of hundreds of tweets. These were promoting the Azuki NFT project as well. Now, Monday, the state government account was attacked. And they did much the same. The attacker spammed tweets about the Azuki project and Azuki airdrops. It's believed that all of these attacks were by the same people or the same organization because they left similar messages about tweets and changed all the pinned messages to an advertisement for something called Bean's Official Collection. Of course, this isn't the first time something like this has happened. Not to India. You know, last December, their Prime Minister, Nahendra Modi, account that also got hacked. And in that case, the attackers tweeted that India had formally recognized Bitcoin as legal tender. Now, for their part, Twitter has stated that none of these breaches have come from their system. So they're pointing the finger back at the Indian government. Board Ape Yacht Club goes Hollywood. And this is interesting. Apparently, this coincides with Coinbase launching their NFT marketplace. So here's what's going on. The Board Ape Yacht Club is getting into the movie business. Not only that, Coinbase will be working the camera. So this announcement comes just six weeks after the launch of the ApeCoin token. And that was on March 18th. And just the week before, they acquired CryptoPunks and MeBits from Larva Labs. To be clear, these are not going to be giant, grand, epic movies. They're not making something like The Lord of the Rings, but with apes. It's going to be a series of three short animated movies called the D-Gen Trilogy. The first is expected to make its debut at NFT NYC in June. And they're saying that both ape and non-ape members of the NFT community will have input on the film's plot. Now, remember how one of the big things about having a board ape is that you get the intellectual rights to your ape and anything that your ape is used in? Apparently, that applies here to some degree or another. Board ape members are encouraged to submit their apes to be in the trilogy. They'll take the apes and any made-up character descriptions and put those in front of an actual Hollywood casting director. A real one not just a guy in a coffee shop who's pretending to be a director. And it's going to be made by Coinbase, which is kind of wild. Apparently, Coinbase has a new media arm. They're going to be using this as kind of a test. They have an entertainment and culture marketing director. His name is William Swan. And he said, quote, You can think of this as a love letter to the NFT tech that has provided so much creative liberation for artists. We really look to Bored Apes as sort of our North Star in the NFT space. They've created such a massive and engaging community. Now, apparently, if you want to watch the movies, you're going to have to have a Coinbase wallet. They're calling it Wallet Gated. And it's not going to be just Bored Apes. Mutant Apes are going to be getting their own turn in the media spotlight, kind of a project just like this. And there's going to be other projects as well. Now, while... Yuga Labs is not going to be hands-on with this thing. Swan said, quote, their eyes and approval will be on it. Nicole Muniz is Yuga Labs CEO, and she said, quote, we're seeing how NFTs are evolving to be vehicles of access in participations in networks, games, merchandise, and now interactive entertainment. 
This is a breakthrough project, and we're excited to see how this shapes the future of Web3 for all communities. And there's some other AP projects out there. You know, Universal Music Group, they're building a band around their Board Ape NFT. And then there was a Board Ape Yacht Club themed restaurant that opened in California. You can even use ApeCoin to pay for your meal there. And that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed tonight's show, like, comment, subscribe, review us, give Tex and I five stars. Do you have any questions or comments about the tonight's show? Send me an email at nick at cryptoovernighter.com. That's nick at cryptoovernighter.com. Oh, and hey, check out my other podcast, Crypto in Five Minutes. We're up to 41 educational podcasts, five minutes to explain one concept in crypto. And as always, may peace reign.